Okay, we're going to do a review of the Victorinox uh, Helmsman versus the Skipper. Doing an unboxing here. Just picked it up from my local store. And yes, I'm doing it like I did last time. Uh, I got a lot of crap about not having a tripod and whatnot. But you know what? Tough. This is real life. Real life happens. So I'm doing it all one-handed. So I paid... I uh, bought at a local store here in Kansas City, and I think I paid 50 bucks for it. I try to buy from local people versus online. I believe in the brick and mortar, the mom and pops. Okay, I spent about 55, $54.55. Uh, that's what I spent. $49.99. Mickey Surplus. I don't get sponsored, obviously, by them or crap like that. But I do like the people there, and I've had good experiences, and it's local, and that kind of stuff matters. See, COVID-19 policy, no refunds, blah, 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 because of the pandemic. But normally, they're really cool about it. Anyway, onward. So $54.55, what I spent for the Victorinox, uh, the um, Helmsman here, the blue one. Here it is. There's all the information, model number, all that jazz, barcode. Have fun with that. Here's what the sucker looks like. Get down to it right away. I like that blue. It's really pretty. That is the mechanism for the knife. I'll show you that later. Fortunately, it's not a switchblade style. That'd be great if they would make one. If uh, Victorinox or Swiss Army would make one that chink would come right out. That would be really, uh, really great in a, especially in a boat knife. And you need it like in, like an emergency kind of situation, which doesn't really happen, but. Sure, it'd be nice to have a switchblade lime slicer slash boat knife. I do like the uh, compass rose kind of looking thing. You know, obviously it's non-functional, it's just a graphic, but uh, the handle feels great in the hand. It's kind of like this nice blue, kind of somewhat texturized, uh, you know, plastic, like an ABS plastic, I guess. And this has a little, I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, we can see my dirty finger now. Sorry, I've been working on the boat, the sailboat, so my, it's dirty. But anyway, it has this textured uh, uh, little thumb guide, if you will. So when you open it up, which I'm going to do right now, when you open up the knife, it locks into place because of the locking back. And, uh, and by put, pulling this down, it releases the locking mechanism. So that's pretty trick. I dig it. The blade itself, you know, it's not huge, serrated, pretty much all the way down to the bottom. I guess there's some, like about, looks like about, I don't know, an inch worth the regular blade, and then it's serrated. And it doesn't really go all the way to the top. It kind of comes down at an angle with the knife, kind of feels good in hand, it's very ergonomically friendly. Kind of points down, again, it's locked. Almost like a sheep's foot. I mean, you don't want something super pointy on a boat. It is the helmsman. Uh, the big difference between the helmsman and the skipper is the skipper has a pair of pliers. And instead of uh, this cool little deal here, the screwdriver and the, uh, the sail all punch, which I'll open here in a little bit, you get the ever important corkscrew, which is great. You know, to impress with the ladies and your friends. To open up a bottle of wine after a good day of sailing on the water with your trusty uh, you know knife but you know that's splitting hairs i have enough varieties of different types of uh, wine bottle openers cork decorkers if you will corkscrews if you will that i don't really need it on another knife but that's the difference between this and the the helmsman and the skippers the skipper has uh a different you know accoutrement if you will has the uh <laughs> it has the uh, corkscrew and it has a pliers built in and i've used the pliers the jaws on the uh victorinox boatsman and the jaws don't open very well and it's supposed to have a wire stripper in built in it's just not to me it's not worth the extra price this was 49 as you can see and i think for the uh for the skipper it's like 89 90 dollars i can't really justify it with that kind of wimpy little pliers anyway so another thing here i'm gonna open all these and i'll show you 
And here's some lime that I'm going to cut. I have a blooming flower at the end. Kind of like a sailor's. It's kind of a faux pas on any sailboat not to have it whipped. So I'm going to cut that off and burn it. It's, you know, I don't want I don't want dandelions growing. Rock chop jay how can you? Yeah, you know it. Let's see. So I do kind of like the rosette look. You know, nice little thematic. There you go. Boom, boom. Hey, rock on. Now, one thing I wish they could have done, but I know they had to keep this knife at a certain price point, but I wish the badge was metal with maybe laminate, uh, you know, enamel badge, you know, almost like a car emblem kind of recessed in there. That'd make this knife look even more handsome than it already does. But, you know, for 50 bucks and the price of two, two big gourmet pizzas at any restaurant with three toppings and maybe a beer or two, you know, or this knife, you know, make a bologna sandwich and you got the money for this knife and don't eat out with your friends and save the 50 bucks and you can have this instead. It does have the obligatory tweezers and, uh, and, uh, what do you want to call it? Toothpick, of which I've used for other things. Um, and the, you know, you've seen the tweezers before. Come on, I'll pick it up though. I've all seen these many times. Right. Okay. Little tweezer, and I've used this for like little tiny things. I, I actually have used the tweezers to pick out a splinter off the dock, out of my foot when I think I'm cool and I'm drunk at three in the morning and happen to get a splinter. Uh, you know, and I've also used it to scrape. I've used it to scrape residue off a spark plug before, and I've used it to kind of like measure and kind of gap it out a spark plug on an outboard, kind of scrape it off. So I've used the tweezers for more than that. Um, same thing I can say. I'm getting it. Hold on. I know you hate my camera work, but you know, deal with it. Um, it's the information that you want. And then, of course, the obligatory uh, toothpick. And you can buy these and the, and the tweezers in bulk off of eBay any day of the week. Um, they're pretty standard size. I think they almost fit in every, every the Tornox knife or Old Swiss Army knife. But I've used this for scraping. Um, I've used it for, you know, on a sailboat for picking out, uh, uh, you know, fiddle blocks. You know, a block basically on a sailboat. A pulley on a sailboat is a block. And I've scraped out crap from a block. Or sometimes even like little fitments and, and uh, screws and whatnot. Stainless steel stuff that has gum in it. Gunk in it so I can get to it and work on the boat. I've used it uh, here and there. And, you know, and I have stabbed... A martini olive or two with it to kind of look cool, you know, at the table, kind of stab an olive, shake and not stirred, you know, have that floating around your martini. That's pretty fun. It's a fun little trick. Again, you know, the screwdriver instead of the corkscrew. Phillips head, substantial. I do like this size. Um, I've used this size on, on other knives, Swiss Army knives, and I have found that it's kind of almost universal compared to like any medium sized. Uh, any medium sized uh, little screw head, a Phillips screw head. So then I'm going to pull up the other ones. Bear with me again. I'm going to put this down. And here is the Marlin spike, which is used to pry in and break free knots. Uh, you know what I mean? You're, you have a knot that's really super hard to hung tie. You can kind of jam that in there and kind of make it wiggle it loose and get a pull of a part of the loop or the bitter end of the knot. And, and undo it and that same thing you can put a line through there and work inside a knot inside the actual grooves on bigger line and do splice light splicing work that's the idea behind that and then this is a shackle key um, and on a boat if I don't know if you've ever had the, uh, the great fun of uh, trying to undo a shackle that's been stuck forever with just your fingers pinching and twisting Man, you just don't get enough leverage, it hurts your fingers. Well, that's the idea with this. You slide it into the shackle, and you can break that shackle free. It is one of the more handy things about any boating knife, is uh, especially on a sailboat with all the shackles that we use constantly. They get, over time, they just sit there through the elements, and they corrode and rust up and whatnot. Or not rust up, but skunk up. And they break that sucker free. That's a big deal. It's a pain in the butt. I'm not going to lie. So this, you know, with your fingers versus a shackle key. 
So that's pretty important. And of course, I'm going to these up. Bear with me again. You guys can leave hateful comments if you want. I'm pretty have te I have Teflon skin. I did this really mean girl in college. Me up, so I learned I'm immune. Anyway, my wife now she's awesome. But anyway, so there's the obligate there's the uh, obligatory uh, bottle opener, you know, with a flat head screw uh, driver, and it does come all the way to the top, so you can get a good twisting in there in tight spaces. I can't say the same about this. You definitely have to T-bone it in, and it doesn't have the same clearance. But that's nice. It has a little wire stripper. I've never had to use that. But and then, of course, the Swiss Army slash Victorinox. Uh, again, can opener. And I have open. It has a tiny little screwdriver right there. I have used these to open cans. It takes a little bit of practice. I made a video about it. And you just kind of have to be patient and, and kind of ruin a couple cans of tuna before you have, learn how to master that that opening. Well, that's all the functions on this knife. Except this one, it's really hard to get to. And if you don't have fingernails, you almost need a pliers to pull this out. That's why I didn't trim my nails. And this is actually could work into a sale. It's an owl, uh, A W A, A W L. Excuse me, not O W L. And it has a little bit of a sharp point to work in the material, and it has that little hole to kind of poke through a sail and kind of fix it. And I have used that before on these. I had a mainsail that was starting to split. I used some of this line. As you can see, I used some of that line through here instead of that one. Because this I think this is old school. And this is just easier to use. And I've like used it like a sewing machine and tied off the ends and uh, fixed my my mainsail, which is under there, which still to this day works. So that was that function, and that goes back in there. So that's pretty much it. Um, you know, again, um, it's you know a handsome little knife, has a lanyard ring, and uh, I do recommend putting a lanyard on these things to kind of be able to pull it out. I prefer monkey fists. I have a monkey fist over here, which I'll show you. One that I tied. I have that on another channel, so I've tied this. This is in camo. I'm not a big fan of camo. Someone asked me to tie a bunch, and I tied like 20 of these for them that they gave away as stocking stuffers to their hunting friends. I'm a sailor. I like the monkey fist for that application, and I don't make them big. This is not a weapon. I know I've seen bigger ones that they use, but I know we're getting off topic here, but this is a keychain. It's a fob, and I tie it with kind of like this little ended it's like a noose, but it's not a slip knot. It doesn't do anything other than kind of look cool, and it's which is debatable. But, but anyway, so you slide it onto. You know, I know. Don't get mad. You slide it on to the end here. You know, ring it through, and you've got a key fob on the end of your lanyard. You now we're getting super. We're getting super nerdy. But I've also seen lanyards that have like a, a slip wrist. But, you know, even that being said, on any good, any good uh, quality sailing jacket, like here's mine. Any good quality sailing jacket, it's going to have a pocket. And I've, uh, with other knives, sailing knives, I've... Uh, with other sailing knives, I've um, put it in here, put it inside, and I had a lanyard hang off so I don't lose it. It just fits just well enough in there with my other stuff that it works. So, the big question is, how does it cut? And it cuts really well. Um, I've had other uh, knives out of... Uh, you know, Swiss Army family, and they come pretty sharp, decent enough to do the job of how serrated. So I'm going to show you. Use my foot. I'm going to cut it right here. Boom. That took me two seconds to make that cut. Here, I'll do it again. Here, 
there's the line. I'm cutting it away from it. Two seconds.